Today, Nvidia officially announced the RTX 40 Super Series GPUs, and I'm gonna tell you everything that you need to know starting right now. Hi, this is Erock on Tech, and today we're talking about Nvidia's brand new upcoming GPUs in 2024. Well, the day is finally here, and I think probably to no one's surprise, Nvidia announced the RTX 40 Super Series GPUs. This had to be the worst kept secret in all of the GPU industry because, well, we kind of knew all of this was coming. And because of that, I made a video a couple of days ago talking about all of this information. And I basically got everything right, not because of me, but because of videocards.com, they basically got everything right. Now, the release dates were a little bit off by a day or two here or there. So the official release is technically a little bit off from that previous video, but all the specs and the pricing is basically spot on, even the naming. Yes, unfortunately, they did keep the terrible naming of the RTX 4070 Ti Super. What an awful name, but hey, it's coming. Now let's talk about the price. Let's talk about the release date. Let's talk about the specifications and the performance claims that Nvidia is holding up, which are probably not entirely accurate. Let's get into it. Okay, first up on January the 17th, 2024, the RTX 4070 Super will launch for $600. And then a week later on January the 24th, 2024, the RTX 4070 Ti Super will launch for $800. And then finally, the RTX 4080 Super will release at the end of the month, January 31st, 2024. 2024 for a US MSRP of $1,000. Okay, so I've been looking online and it does seem like most people are happy with what they're seeing here because you're basically getting more performance for either less money or the same amount of money. In the case of the 4080 Super, it came down $200 when compared to the original RTX 4080. And now it's a car that is $200 cheaper and it will be at least a little bit faster. And in the case of the 4070 Ti Super, it is staying the exact same MSRP, but you're getting four more gigs of VRAM and it's gonna have more CUDA cores and you know just better rasterization overall. So it is a faster card with more VRAM for the same price. And finally, and probably the most underwhelming upgrade here is the RTX 4070 Super. Obviously, if you have a 4070, don't go buy a 4070 Super, but if you're entering into the market and you're trying to decide between the two cards, the 47 Super will be a faster card with more CUDA cores. Unfortunately, it will also have a little bit higher power draw coming in at 220 watts as opposed to 200 watts, but it will have more CUDA cores and therefore it will be slightly faster in terms of overall rasterization. And yes, the 4070 Super is keeping the original US MSRP of the 4070, which is 599. And now the RTX 4070 has been lowered down to a new US MSRP of 549. Now I did say the RTX 4070 4070 Super is probably the most underwhelming upgrade here. And I think the price does in fact reflect that because there's only a $50 price difference there. And so Nvidia knows, hey, you know what? There's not a big difference between these two cards. You can save $50 and go with a 4070, or you can pay $50 more and get a little bit more rasterization performance. And so it really just kind of depends how much you value the performance versus $50, I guess. But prices coming down and prices staying the same with more performance is always a good thing. This is the value that gamers want, and this is the value that gamers have been asking for. I think the big question now is, Will Nvidia keep it up going into the 50 series cards in the future? But before we can look to the future, let's take a look at the slide that Nvidia released showing us the current situation with their GPU lineup and how everything stacks up. Nvidia released this slide today, which I found very interesting for a variety of reasons. First of all, they still have the 4090 at the top listed at 1599 US MSRP. And the only problem I have with that is the fact that you cannot get this card for 1599 and you haven't been able to get this card for 1599 for a couple of months now, the 4090 is selling regularly now for $2,000 in the US. And I know it's only worse than that in other countries outside of the US. Below that, you now have the RTX 4080 Super coming in at $1,000. This is now $200 cheaper than the 4080, and it's going to be faster than the 4080. This is using the full 80103 die. So you're getting the full thing here. This is definitely going to be a better GPU overall than the original 4080 was. This also puts Nvidia into a position where they can better compete with AMD's Radeon 7900 XTX, which had an original US MSRP of $1,000 as well. But now you can regularly get that card for around 950 or less. But please notice how the RTX 4080 is no longer listed here. Nvidia is planning to discontinue that card. And speaking of discontinuing cards, you can also see that the RTX 4070 Ti is no longer listed on this slide either. So Nvidia is also discontinuing that card as well. You now have the RTX 4070 Ti Super with the original MSRP of the 4070 Ti of $800. 
$400. Below that, you now have the RTX 4070 Super coming in at $599, and then below that, the 4070 at $549, and below that, the 4060 Ti for $399, and finally, the 4060 for $299. Okay, for the 4070 Super, they provided us with this chart comparing it to the 3070 and the 2070, and everything's divided with games with frame generation and games without frame generation. And if you look at the configuration at the bottom, you can see everything was ran with the 12900K at 1440p. And of course, they're using all the other technologies that NVIDIA loves to promote with ray tracing and DLSS. Basically, you're not really getting any kind of native rendering performance here. No raw rasterization. They're muddling all the numbers here with frame generation technology, DLSS technology, ray tracing technology. You're not getting native performance here. But if you look at the games with frame generation, you can see the 4070 Super is ahead by a mile. But again, that's with frame generation. And you're talking about comparing it to two cards, the 3070 and the 2070, which cannot natively support frame generation. You have to use a third party mod and mod it in yourself if you want access to that technology because Nvidia has locked it down to the 40 series GPUs. And of course, if you look at the games without frame generation, you're now talking about games that do support DLSS 2, which is something that the 2070 and 3070 both have access to. When it is a like for like comparison like that, you can see the 4070 Super is still ahead by a good margin. But again, you're not talking about native performance here. Nvidia basically does not care about native rendering, unfortunately. Next up, we basically have the exact same chart with all the same games and all the same settings. The only difference is you're now talking about the 4070 Ti Super versus the 2070 Ti Super and then the 2070 Super. And as you can see, it's the exact same story. The 4070 Ti Super is miles ahead in games that support frame generation because the other two GPUs simply don't have access to that technology. And then when it comes down to games without frame generation, the margin closes a little bit, but the 4070 Ti Super is still out by a good margin. But again, none of this is native rendering. And do you want to take a guess at what the final chart is? Oh, it's the exact same thing once again, except now you're talking about the 4080 Super versus the 3080 Ti and the 2080 Super. Games with frame generation and games without all the same comments that I had before. Now, let me clarify here. I understand a lot of you are probably going to listen to my tone and say, why is he being so dismissive of frame generation and ray tracing? And why is he just talking down like that? There's more things that matter outside of native rendering and raw rasterization, etc. There was a time here on the channel about a year ago where I could talk about things like that in a negative light and basically everybody would rally behind me because gamers wanted native rendering. They wanted raw rasterization. But now since then, a lot of gamers have started to get on board with the idea of frame generation and DLSS and ray tracing and things of that nature. And that's all fine. All of those technologies do in fact have their place. The problem is simple. I don't mind doing like for like comparisons and saying, hey, a 2070 Super versus a 3070 Ti versus a 4070 Super which one's faster with DLSS 2 enabled in all the same games with the same settings. That is a like for like comparison. The problem I have though, is that when you enter into frame generation, number one, these are not natively rendered frames. And I understand that a lot of people cannot necessarily tell the difference, including myself at times. You literally have to slow down the gameplay and go frame by frame to see where the artificial frame is inserted and what it looks like. And Digital Foundry has done a good job at pointing that out. The problem is though, they're not rendered in the same fashion. So that's already introducing another element that is simply messing up the data. Additionally, you're using a technology that does not exist on the other cards you're comparing against. And so therefore it is not a like for like comparison. And therefore it makes it hard as a person who would go out and buy one of these cards to really understand what you're getting outside of just AI technology. And the final problem is the fact that Nvidia actually is giving you a physical upgrade here. They're actually giving you something outside of AI. The 4070 Ti Super is a physical hardware upgrade. You're getting more memory. You're getting more memory bandwidth. You're getting more CUDA cores. The 4080 Super is the full die and it's $200 cheaper. The 4070 Super is giving you more CUDA cores. You're getting a faster card and I would love to see how these cards actually perform but Nvidia does not want to provide that information because of marketing and because of money because when they put a 4070 Super against a 4070 and the 4070 Super is only about five to seven percent faster on average that does not sell units but when they can take a 4070 super turn on frame generation and compare it to a 2070 super that doesn't even have access to it now you see a chart that looks like this and it makes people think "Ooh, big number good and they want to go out and buy it at least that's the way marketing people think that you think here's my two cents on the situation obviously if you already have a 40 series gpu don't go out and buy another 40 series gpu wait until the 50 series gets here and even then 
depending on what card you have, you may not need an upgrade. But if you're coming into the market and you're saying, hey, look, I need a new GPU and I'm entering into the 40 series, then here's the way I look at everything. I think probably the best value here is gonna be between the 4070 Ti Super or the 4080 Super. And to be completely honest with you here, I'm leaning more towards the 4070 Ti Super simply because number one, it got the biggest upgrade across the board from all three GPUs. And number two, it is still $200 below $1,000. It's coming in at $799 or $800. And while yes, that is still a lot of money, that's a lot better than a thousand bucks in my opinion. So you're looking at a card that's gonna be noticeably faster than the 4070 Super. It's gonna be behind the 4080 Super, but it's gonna close that gap on the 4080 and you're still in under a thousand dollars. And I don't mean like 999 under a thousand dollars. I mean, you're actually under a thousand dollars. And so I find all of this to be very rock solid and I'm looking forward to seeing the reviews on the 4070 Ti Super. Again, let me know in the comments below, what card do you want me to buy and review here on the channel? Get subscribed. So you don't miss it. If you like this video, do me a favor, hit that like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. And until next time, E-Rock out.